17 years ago, one of the greatest comic films of all time was released. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2. Not everyone will agree, and that's perfectly fine, despite the fact it's not 100% close to the original source material, especially since, truth be told, no comic film really is. And I'm referring to the organic webbing in a way that Peter and MJ met, which is different than the comics. Other than that, Sam Raimi perfectly nailed it. It was pretty damn close to it because it nailed the vital aspects of the characters that Stanley created, especially the hidden messages behind it. And the one thing that mostly everyone can relate to, and one of the main reasons that Peter Parker is such a relatable character, is because nothing ever goes right for him. He's always constantly struggling every day. He isn't a rich billionaire with fancy cars and toys. He's just a nerdy kid from Queens, and that's one of the main reasons to why Tom McGuire truly nails as a character. Not so much Spider-Man, but I believe he is the best version of Peter Parker on the big screen. In the first film, we see how much poor Peter suffers through high school bullying and trying to get the attention of his childhood crush. Yet in a sequel, yeah, we really felt it. Especially in that scene at the planetarium. See, the thing is that not everyone is completely aware of how much homage was paid for the comics into this film. Yes, yeah, Sam Raimi delivers the vital messages that Stanley always tried to tell in stories. Like, for example, Anne May's speech about how there's a hero in all of us. There's always a theme for each film as well. Like, for example, for Spider-Man 3, the theme was all about revenge and how it's like a poison and what happens to those who seek vengeance instead of forgiveness. You know, other than the Spider-Man No More um, storyline, there were so many other things from the comics that were put into this film. And it goes to show on how passionate Sam Raimi is about the character and how much he pays attention to detail. Especially the relationship between Peter Parker and Dr. Octavius, which is absolutely mind-blowing. The chemistry between those two actors is absolutely perfect. I really felt bad for Otto when Rosie died, and the tension between Peter and Harry was absolutely insane. I remember that I was at the edge of my seat in theaters when Harry was about to rip off Spider-Man's mask. I was like, oh shit. And I know for that train sequence, everyone lost their collective shits in theaters. And it still remains to be one of the most insane fight sequences ever in Spider-Man film, which hasn't been topped yet. You know, I'm waiting for that one. And I love how Sam developed Mary Jean's story even more in his film. We got a little bit of it in the first film, but they fully explained on how her mother is sick, which she was in the comics, and how her dad is abusive drunk to stop backstage to ask for money. That's totally the character from the comics. And everyone's complaining about how they completely ditched the modeling aspects, yet they seem to, you know, miss the billboard over modeling for Emma Rose perfume in the beginning and, you know, throughout the film, you see the posters. And I honestly don't think it was necessary to see footage of her modeling when the ads pretty much tell the story. As far as the whole, well, why are they, you know, focused more on her Broadway and film career instead of her modeling career, yet people once again never read the comics and forgets that she also did film. She got a role on the soap opera Secret Hospital in the comics once. And I mean, look, whenever I see people make stupid complaints about how it's not accurate to the source material, you're dealing with morons who've never read them, okay? And as far as I'm concerned, Kirsten Dunn's version of Mary Jane Watson is the closest that you'll ever get to the 616 version because they completely bastardized the version of MJ with Michelle Jones, who's way, 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 way far left field from the original source material and a fucking abomination. And even Shane Lee Woodley's version is gonna be completely different and going a completely different direction, which I wasn't very happy about. So next up, I'm gonna show you some of the comic panels from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, the page homage to the uh, comics. So until next time, on the Same Spider Time, Same Spider Channel, and Same Spider Place, Spidey Weapon Out. Thanks, Tiger, you just hit the jackpot. Woohoo!